Hello, uh, Mrs. Mark Moses. We welcome you to the uh, Huffington Post Greece. So you are the CEO of Coaching International. It's a very difficult job, the one that you're doing. <laughs> it's uh, coaching CEOs to become better CEOs, which I guessed it's very interesting. What else do you uh, have to say to him to become better? Well, it, it depends. CEOs come to us for a variety of different reasons. Sometimes they come to us because they just want to grow their business, they want to grow revenue or and grow profit. Other times they come to us, they want to be a better leader or a better CEO. Other times they've lost their confidence or um, they've lost confidence in their people or their industry is going through a really tough time and they're navigating some serious headwinds. Sometimes they want to grow by acquisition. Sometimes they're the first time CEO of a PE backed firm and they want to succeed and not get fired. Well, it's a great question. First thing that we do with every CEO we work with is we ask them what is success for them three years from now. And so we want to know what the assignment is. Help them define what it will take to get that success. Ensure they have the right people in place to help them achieve that. And ensure they have the right accountability systems in place to allow them to execute at, at optimal levels. You know, you've mentioned the word richer twice. Not necessarily. Um, all my friends are CEOs. I've been. I've never had a job. I've been an entrepreneur all my life, so I know this community really well. And when you say richer, um, I don't want you to confuse more money, because that's not necessarily what a CEO wants. Um, they want to be richer in life, meaning that I. I'd like to have a, a more successful business that serves my customers while still being a good father, spouse, member of my community. Um, so richer means more than just making more profit. Mm -hmm. that, keep in mind, they, they work hard and they're 24 seven obsessed with what they do but we try to coach them too, while you're having success in your business, how to also have success in, in life. Um, going through a divorce and having kids that don't like you isn't necessarily living a richer life. It's a new perspective, I guess. You've uh, said in an interview you had before that the artificial intelligence is the future and we have to invest in this field. You know, this is a really great topic. I was just with Peter Diamandis, who is a leader in uh, AI, and he said there'll be two kinds of companies by the end of the decade, uh, those that embraced AI and those that have gone out of business. So what I would encourage CEOs to think about today is there's so much coming at us from AI every day. and and. Most CEOs are flat-footed today, not knowing what to do. If you ask CEOs today, on a scale of one to 10, how impactful do you think AI will be on in your industry? They'll all say nine or 10. If you ask them how prepared they are in their firm today, the typical answer is two out of 10. And so we recommend every CEO determine what they want their AI vision to be, and then build a roadmap of what that vision is going to be. We, we call it, uh, the way to tackle a problem like this is divergent, convergent thinking. What are all the things that I could do? That's the divergent part. And the converging is, well, what are the things that I should do? How fast do they need to, to run? Running is something that you really like. I've, I've heard that you, you really love marathons. I do. I've done mm -hmm. a few. And you think businesses are marathons or something really fast? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so uh, I'm a triathlete, as you probably know, and uh, I view uh, an Ironman triathlete. And so I believe that uh, 
businesses are not a sprint. Um, it, it's, a, it's a marathon or Ironman. Um, you're not gonna have an overnight success. Um, it's measured in years or decades to really build um, a business that's gonna be sustainable and last a long time. Uh, if I were to invest today, it would be in AI for sure. Um, AI is moving so, so fast. I'll share a couple of things that we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. In uh, Think, for example, training salespeople, how much effort it is to, to watch what they do and help them be more effective. Today, AI can listen to a recorded call and grade you on how well you did and make recommendations for you on what you could have done different to be more effective. Wow, imagine that. So AI can do that without the involvement or help of a human. It doesn't you. sound good for the human race though. I agree, but imagine, you, you asked me a difficult question, where would I invest today? I'd invest in AI, what part of AI? Imagine, look at all these call centers where people call in today and you may be frustrated with your credit card company and you call and you got somebody from India answering the phone and now you're just frustrated and then they transfer you to another call or to another person and then another person and they may you still may be unresolved um, after you spent an hour maybe or longer um, or you're on with an airline that trying to change your ticket or something like that. Imagine if AI could do that and empathize with you as you're going through the, um, empathize with you catering to your emotions. Um, I think that'd be pretty clever. We're in trouble. I, well, you could view it as we're in trouble <laughs> or um, um, it would be um, for business, mm -hmm. it would, um, uh, enable um, businesses to do things for less cost and potentially even driving pricing down for the customer. So this book is, we would get asked all the time, why do some CEOs do so much better than other CEOs what are the traits that they have in common that enable some to be so successful versus others that are meaningfully less successful? And uh, we wrote about 30 case studies in this book with examples of real companies, clients of ours that have had a tremendous success and the practices they used to have that success. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what the book is about. Well, my position on it is this, that um, in Europe as a whole, coaching is something newer um, to leaders in Europe. And um, the perception that coaching has, I'll say across Europe, uh, Greece included, is that um, I don't need coaching. Coaching is beneath me mm -hmm. and um, where it's very prevalent in the U.S. And uh, it's all athletes um, around the world have coaches. And coaches bring out the best in, in those athletes and help them get better. That's the same for, uh, for, for CEOs. And, um, and the reason I partnered uh, with Mr. Spinidis is uh, I believe that uh, he's embraced coaching sees a real need for it, wants to bring uh, coaching to Greece and give um, the CEOs and entrepreneurs and um, Gen 2 and Gen 3 of family businesses an opportunity to help them navigate through some of the difficult things that they navigate or navigating through. Take family businesses, for example. It's difficult being Gen 2 and following in mom or dad's shoes. It's difficult being in Gen 3, having your cousins and your siblings in a business with you 
and some of them may be very effective and some of them very incompetent. And how does one navigate through some of those difficult personal relationships and still live the family legacy and ensure that the business is successful? Thank you, Thank you so much for being in Huffington Post, Grace. Thank you so much for this interview. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.